welcome back to this week's series of realism tips. I'm actually going to be starting off on the character screen for this one because I just wanted a quick little showcase of differences as we are going to be covering dimorphism. So with dimorphism, it's really important to try and bear in mind the gender you're trying to portray and what that means for that particular animal on the server. So every animal is going to be different in the kinds of dimorphism it has, if it even has any. So for example, on bars Boldia here, males are considered slimmer with brighter patterns, whilst females are bulkier with dull colors. So since males are slimmer, if I was going for a male, I would likely be going for either a speed or a balance, as that is going to be slimmer than the bulky. Um, if I was playing a female, however, I would be likely to go for the bulky to go for that kind of wider stance. Of course, you're not strictly limited to this, as you can ultimately play any of these subspecies for any of these genders. You just may have a harder time actually coming across as those particular uh, genders correctly to those of the opposite sex in game. This can be helped with the brighter and duller colors that we see in the rest of the part of the dimorphism. So if females have duller colors, we could pick something that has generally duller colors. So this one's probably one of the darker ones. And then we could just select some of these actual darker colors here. So we could stay away from some of these reds and pinks and even lighter tans and just stick with like darker gray options. So, we could say, do something like this. So, we could do something like this for our female dull colors. It's generally pretty black, it's very bulky, it's got browns, and of course a slightly lighter underbelly, which is pretty common in a lot of animals, no matter how bright or dull they are. Now, say if I were crafting this to be a male bars Boldia, I could go for male of the speed subspecies to get that thinner pattern. And already with that green, I'm looking so much brighter than my other counterpart. But let's see what else we can do here. So in this particular case, pattern one has quite a lot of markings over the eye and less black, so I may go for this. So in this case, we can do a lighter underbelly. I kind of like to go for contrasting patterns on those with brighter dimorphisms as I feel like that catches the eye a bit more, but you can really play that however you would like to. So this is mainly for the back, and I'd say green or blue here are both viable options. Just for now I'm going to go with blue. Green is probably the brightest of these options, so we'll stick with the lighter green. And the same sort of thing here. So, in Bars Boldy, it just says brighter patterns, so you can also incorporate that a different way. You could say that the patterns here are brighter, and you could go for a lighter marking, or you could go for just generally bright colors, so you could do like a green and red here, or you can go for the strict contrast and go for like a green. That's kind of up to your own interpretation of what feels good for you. But this is how I would demonstrate the difference between male and female on this particular animal. As you can see, even just with the generic skins that they provide, that's a pretty big difference between the male and the female. So this is a good way to exemplify that dimorphism, as the male and female would be very clearly different in their adult skins. This will benefit you greatly in-game as this will allow you to court clearly with other members of the opposite sex, but you can also try and accommodate any differences that come with, oh, say a duller male or bulkier male, trying to still woo over a female with the behaviors of an adult male. 
Don't be surprised, though, if this does end up leading to confusion on the part of the other player as they don't necessarily know what you're going for. So, for example, what I'd say may be a confusing meal, may be a balanced skin, something that's a bit bulkier than the speed, and then something slightly less contrasting. So maybe let's do this one, and let's pick a duller skin, duller colors, So here I'm just selecting really the darkest colors that I can. Night color doesn't really matter. So this is something I would say maybe like a confusing meal on just a generic preset skin color. So here we have a male that is slightly bulkier. It has a lot more blacks and browns on it. There is still green there, but the green itself is duller, it's less pronounced. In general, this is something that I could see a female being a little bit confused on at first. Um, maybe at first she thinks that this is another female, and so she's just like, Oh, hey girl, oh, you're trying to court me? Oh, that's kind of weird, what are you doing? Get away from me. So that could also just be a way to like showcase confusion there. Um, and then I would say ultimate confusion for a male would be if you did go for the bulky type then it'd be even more so. Wait a second, so is that a lady or is that a dude? I don't know, it kind of looks like me. It kind of doesn't. So that's when you'd really have to rely on innate behaviors to demonstrate to your other players, hey, I'm actually a dude. And again, I do just want to emphasize that it's okay to be confused if a player is Going against dimorphism, if they're picking a bulky male when it says a slim male and thick female or vice versa, it's okay to reject them because you don't understand what they're asking for. And if you aren't following dimorphism, it's okay to be rejected. You're not always going to win over the mate if you're showcasing some kind of behavior that's considered unideal for that dinosaur. So in this case, dimorphism can play a role. Of course, we don't want to limit players to specifically choosing one kind or another, um, as that does limit gameplay options, but do bear that in mind for the ultimate choice when you are trying to court, that that can uh, affect who is going to actually nest with you. Ultimately, it may even be that nobody chooses to nest with you if you go very far against dimorphism, or if you can't really nail that part of the courting and reproduction section, that would make up for your duller colors or more confusing appearance. So just do bear that in mind as a whole. Okay, so now I'm here in game as our quote unquote ideal with the base skin, male bars boldia. So I'm currently 0.7. I'd say around this time is when you'd really start to consider adulthood fancies in our current server settings. Basically, once you start reaching late adolescence and subhood, whatever those markers may be on the server, you're going to start getting interested in others. So this is also when you're going to start testing limits and seeing what you can get away with and basically what works and what doesn't. Think of classic teenage flirtation ships. That's the stage that your dinosaur currently is. For this particular tip, it recommends watching your father from a distance during courting time between bowls and copying him by playing with mothers and other female adolescents in the herd as a good way to practice and build relationships. This is a very good tip, as animals will watch by doing, but they will really only learn by experience. So as we start to get older, we can start to imitate the older bulls and what they're doing. Ter bars, males will typically begin to distance themselves from the herd and begin loudly bellowing, circling, and kicking up debris to show their strength to the females. Brighter, more varied patterns will catch the eye of females during these displays as well. So the most successful bulls will be those that not only put on a good show, but also stand out. 
While it is intense, males do not fight other males and instead focus on their display. And females will eventually pick their partner for the season this based on the bull's display and contrasted skin. So this is why selecting a good skin for dimorphism is super important. Males that are slimmer and more brightly colored are going to be innately favored. Males that are bulkier and more dull are going to be passed over in exchange for bright, more brightly colored males. Of course, if you're trying to emulate a bull that is less successful, you can certainly do so by picking the duller colored male or having a not as good display as other males would. So, bars in general would display by loudly calling, so broadcasting and spinning and using abilities to kick up dirt and dust and dance and do whatever they can to attract the attentions of other females. So as bulls start to mature into this behavior and they start to see what works and what doesn't, they'll try and emulate the successful ones. As you if somebody's doing something wrong and they're not getting any ladies, why would you do what they're doing? So you go with what your father or another successful male is doing. If he's putting on a particularly good show, he's being really loud and he's doing a lot of fancy moves, like whatever that was, then you'd probably try and emulate those and you do so in play. You do so with other members of your herd and build up a rapport with them. You would try and just generally master that before it became your time to actually court as an adult. And you wouldn't be good at it first, even if you're a master bars player and you know everything about the dance of the bars. Your male doesn't. He's still new to this, so just try and act that out. Yelling is easy, so maybe he just starts off with that. Maybe it's just a few little anxious twists and turns for our young male here. Few calls. Just to try and call up some attention. And this could even be irritating for others. Bars don't court and joust in the same way that some other animals will. But that doesn't mean that older, more experienced males that are trying to do this for real may not get a little bit irritated. Or um, even mom may get a little bit irritated that her kid's kicking up such a ruckus. I know I look big here, but I'm only about 0.7 here. So if I was a larger adult, then I uh, could be pretty intimidating to younger kids like what I'm portraying here. So just try and keep that in mind. I'm not doing a super in-depth analysis. I'd recommend looking to pot resources, for example, of dimorphism and why it's so important for right now. But I did just want to kind of showcase that differences a little bit. So let's say I was born a melanistic animal. For a female bars, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm very dull innately. But for a male bars, that could be really hard to overcome. So you could be dancing your heart out here for all the females and they may just not care. You're probably too dull, too monotone to actually attract their gaze. Especially if there's actually another male here to compete against me. And that is totally okay. You can be calling and dancing and doing everything you can to showcase that you're a healthy partner. And they may just not view you as such. They may understand where you're coming from, and maybe you do put up a good enough dance and song to actually attract their attention. But more than likely, you won't. And that's okay. It's just one of the downsides of not following dimorphism and choosing to be born as an animal that would have that natural disadvantage. Melanistic and albino animals wouldn't really be able to change their status as what they were born as. as Melanistic animals are just born with a lot of melanin or black pigmentation of their skin. Even if they change color seasonally, 
that wouldn't really be overridden. It would just be displayed as maybe even more dark color than what they would normally be presenting, and maybe that's their difference. Albinos are the opposite. They do not produce melanin, and so they um, would really just stick to whites, yellows, pinks, anything that doesn't have that black coloration. So albinos may change colors with the season to something that has more pinks or yellows on it, but melanistic animals wouldn't have that kind of luxury. So they'd have to try and entirely make up for that difference with their claws, assuming that they have to be brightly colored. Now, albino animals are going to be portrayed as sickly no matter what. So it's important also to bear in mind that if you are albino, even if you follow quote unquote brightly colored, you still may not attract a partner. And again, that is okay as animals are going to naturally be attracted to what they perceive as the healthiest and strongest thing and what is displayed in the reproduction section of the profile is currently what is considered the healthiest and strongest thing for that animal. So just bear that in mind too. It's okay to be rejected. It's okay to reject others. You don't, you shouldn't have to worry about hurt feelings as at the end of the day we're all just playing characters and it's about providing that experience to another player and oftentimes if I'm playing an albino animal I would want to be rejected. I would actually feel worse if somebody accepted me as a mate because they felt obligated to because ultimately it would feel undeserved. You're not necessarily following dimorphism and especially if I did really bad at my dance like say this is all I did as an albino that 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 was it that's all I did and someone picked me I feel very sad <laughs> so it's okay to reject it's okay to be rejected we can't all be lucky in love it's just how it goes and if there's somebody that does a better dance than you or has a better healthier presenting skin or follows dimorphism more closely well that's what it's gonna be sometimes and that is a-okay again if you want to explore this in more detail I highly recommend looking at eggs uh, resources and pot resources for dimorphism as I know they put a lot of effort into it and I think it's a really clear guide and isn't just me rambling on for however long this video goes. So I do hope that this was informative and that you enjoyed this. If you have any tips, please don't hesitate to put those into the Google Forms and the Discord as I will be pulling from those for future iterations of this. And if you have any questions or comments or tips of your own, you can leave them in the comment section below. And of course, you can reach out in the Discord itself for acting questions and assistance questions for more immediate help if you do have any. You can also reach out to me whenever. I am always happy to help. But I hope you did enjoy this and have a great rest of your day or evening whenever you're watching this. Stay safe out there. I'll see you next time. Bye!